Hello and welcome to another episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. My name is Adam and joining me today is Liz. How are you today, Liz? I'm good. Thanks, Adam. We've had a bit of a chaotic start trying to get Zoom to work, but uh, I've got my ylang ylang to make me calm, so we're all all right. <laughs> I, I think we're cursing ourselves each and every week because whatever oil we choose, it seems that we have to go through a challenge to lean on that oil to remember yeah. how amazing that oil is. That's right. It's so. right. It's like this spiritual journey every time we do it. <laughs> And hopefully everyone who's watching and listening is maybe having the journey, but maybe a more pleasant journey than we have some weeks with these challenges as well. But Alang yeah. Alang is the card that you pulled last week. So we're going to dive in deep into this amazing essential oil that is gifted to us from a flower that's actually native to the Philippines. Uh, it does grow in other places and it's kind of spread because it's beautiful perfume throughout that kind of uh, area of Asia. But a lot of our um, Ylang Ylang essential oil actually comes from Madagascar, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, I think traditionally, you know, when you see these, like, well, I'm going to say Hawaiian, but when the, when I would say that when people land on the island, they have the beautiful lays of flowers. Mm. And they're given traditionally to visitors to the island to have these lays of flowers. And uh, I think that's the ultimate imagery of it, to, to imagine that you've gone to Madagascar, you're on the beach and you've got this beautiful lay. I mean, that just takes you immediately into the Ylang Ylang space, I think. I would have, have to agree with you. When I smell Ylang Ylang, it transports me straight away to a tropical island where you've got no agenda, you've got no time and schedule and everything just slows down. The weather's perfect. Everyone's beautiful. And it, it is the oil of love, really, in many, many ways, isn't it? It is, and I do think that to experience it, I mean, we, we use it as aphrodisiac, don't we? I mean, we'll talk about that. There's no getting away from it. But in some ways, it's better to have it not so intimately with you, to have it over the other side of the room, to almost experience it as if it's drifting on the breeze, because it can be quite nauseating, can't, and can't it, if you have it too close to you. So, yeah. I have found that. As, as I've gone through my journey throughout the years and started to get a little bit more choosy on where I get my essential oils from, knowing that not all essential oils are actually from the plant, I have found that I'm getting real ylang ylang oils. That too much of it is definitely, for me, ugh, a bit too much. Really so I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the things I always talk about with ylang ylang is how good it is for blood pressure. And mm. so I went, um, I went on a... Um, to the optometrist uh, a couple of years ago and you know they take the picture of the back of your eye my yes. blood vessel was all really bulging and she kind of looked horrified and said you need to go to the doctors now that's really high blood pressure and I thought well, that's very strange because I have low blood pressure naturally but I did as I was told and I went to the doctors and she said it is high I think we need to talk about medicines and I said no give me two weeks because I don't think that that's the thing. And uh, so, yeah, I immediately went home and put my aroma pendant on with a drop of ylang ylang. And I could feel the, the, the stress drifting away. But also, I can remember actually very vividly going to see my youngest in, a, in his nativity and thinking, suddenly thinking, oh, my God, that's got to go. You know, it, as, you know suddenly it creeps up on you. So I thought, yes. I can't. I can't do both. I can't like not have it on and do the medicine. So I thought, well, what other oil would be really good for blood pressure? So I inter like interchanged between ylang ylang and clary sage, and within within a week, my blood pressure was right down again. Just swear, uh, just swearing it. So it is really powerful. But yeah, if you have it all the time, it's certainly headaches. But even just sitting with me by now, it's making me feel nauseous. It's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing you talking about blood pressure and I, I had always heard about it being great for blood pressure but I actually had a uh, experience late last year I was in Japan and I was actually with uh, Dr. Dr. Braddock Riggs who is a practicing GP but also in his practice also includes essential oil use and we actually had someone at this convention collapse and he oh, wow. checked and that they basically their blood pressure was really high we could called an ambulance but what he did is a kind of a maintenance thing you know to look after them while we're waiting for the ambulance to come was he actually got ylang ylang and just had kind of wafted that around her and that kind of thing and to see a gp doing that was kind of you know a, a really momentous moment 
kind of thing. And he also, we, we actually went out for dinner afterwards and he was like, oh, my God, he, he wasn't a fan of the smell either. No, so no, it's, it's too much, isn't it? A little bit and goes a long way. I do think it's one of those that you either love or you hate and it changes. So you mm. kind of can bear it when you need it, but other times you're like, whoa, too much. But yeah. just going back to the, the blood pressure thing, uh, I did yeah. a, a joint lecture a few weeks ago with a lady called Kathy Skipper about menopause. And we were, there was a lady on there who I know will be watching today. So that's why I'm, I'm going to give her a, a shout out because she was saying my blood pressure is really high, high energy. <laughs> and uh, I told her the story and she messaged me a couple of late, uh, days later and she said, I've been using the Ylang Ylang and the Clarice Age and my blood pressure has gone down seven points in two days. Wow. And so, you know, so it was really nice to have somebody who had clearly got quite a bad problem with it, was able to give a measurable response to it. Yeah, and you're here. You would recommend just aromatic use seems to be doing the trick for most people. Yeah, yeah. I always say, I mean, by all means, put it in the bath and use it in massage oils and all of those things. But the best is inhalation in every possible way for blood pressure because it's going straight to the brain and into the lungs, isn't it? So it's getting really yeah. fast into the heart. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Now, it's obviously a great one during the day when we do have our high blood pressure, but it can definitely be an oil of the night as well. There are so many different sleep oils that we can sleep from, from good old lavender to cedarwood to vetiver and that type of thing. But where I recommend and where I really lean into a Lang Lang is it's really great for those people that just can't shut off their mind at night. Those that lay in bed going, shut up, brain. And I'm going to slip into a bit of astrology here. The Greeks and the Romans would attribute different um, colours of flowers to different planets. And it was quite interesting because the yellow flowers, they attributed to Mercury. So Ylang Ylang, I find, helps to quell the mind. So if you're having problems sleeping, and it could partly be because the mind is ticking, that's why I really like Ylang Ylang um, and, and often choose it for, you know, that type of sleep challenge. Yeah, I think it takes you into a dreamy state of mind as well, doesn't it? Away from like the prosaic into sort of more magical realms, if you like, you know. It's, yeah. it's more kind of, it belongs to the fairies and the unicorns and stuff. It's got that kind of feeling too, hasn't it? You know, the dreamy sort of, you know, it doesn't belong to office thought by any stretch of the imagination. But also, uh, you're quite right. I mean, it's it's quite early in the morning here. And it definitely doesn't fit energetically with mornings. It is an evening mm. time oil, isn't it? Very much so, yes. And not only is it great for getting to sleep, but it's renowned as being one of the aphrodisiac oils as well, which when we think about it, when we're stressed and our mind's going, we can't sleep and we're definitely not in the mood for intimacy either. So settling down the mind, why, why apart from settling down the mind, is there any other reason why it is renowned for being such a great aphrodisiac? I think it's quite heady, isn't it? It's quite intoxicating, a bit like jasmine is. Um, yeah. I don't know if I don't know if biologically we can or physiologically we can prove it, but it, it definitely is, isn't it? Right, right through traditional medicine, it all says. And when we talk about those like lays that those um, people have, they would also on uh, in Madagascar on somebody's wedding night, they strew the bed with your lang mm. flowers, the marital bed. So you know that it, it's very much. Uh, takes you to somewhere in your brain that's something to do with sex but i don't know if we can elucidate exactly where that is yeah and she's known sometimes nicknamed as the queen of the perfume so she's yeah. used in a lot of fragrances and again that sense of smell again evokes feelings evokes emotions and the lang lang is going to be absolutely perfect for that yeah and do you know what ylang ylang means no i do not flower Please, of flowers me. Flower of flowers. Yes. So yeah. it's like the most flower of all the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It, it is interesting. Obviously, around the world, you know, Rose is sometimes known as the queen of flowers. In the East, I know Chrysanthemum is known as the queen of the East yeah. kind of thing. So it's amazing how different, you know, this, I guess in the tropical lands, Ylang Ylang is probably the queen of that region. Well, I think that these names go back to times where people didn't travel that widely, you know, the, the ordinary person, you know. So potentially that was the, the flower of flowers to the people on the Madagascar island. But that in itself is a big thing, isn't it? Because Madagascar has incredible uh, botany, flora, fauna, animals, all of those things. It's still very high accolade, isn't it? Very much so. Now, the other interesting thing about Ylang Ylang is the way that it's distilled. It is steam distilled. 
it's distilled, but you can kind of do it in different ways to get a different result. Is that right? Nearly right. So um, it's fractionally distilled. So it, sometimes it's still steam distilled. Sometimes it's water distilled, hydro distilled. Um, and I don't know why they would cho choose which. But um, my understanding is that the certain components like the benzyl alcohol that um, don't like heat. So they want to do it very coolly to, mm. to uh, keep them. But so what they so a fractional distillation is that they stop and start the distillation over and over. So. The very first sort of few minutes isn't very nice, apparently. So they took that away. And then the, after an hour's distillation, they take off uh, what's called the extra. And that is the finest of all the distillations. And it is full of alcohols and esters and costs exorbitant amounts of money. And places like Givenchy, uh, uh, Chanel, Lancome, all of those, they're the ones that can afford those. And they're the ones that are well sought after for um, perfumery. So then the distillation goes on again. And so then we have distillation, Ylang Ylang 1. So that was Ylang Ylang Extra, Ylang Ylang 1. Uh, is between, is stopped somewhere between one hour and three hours. And what's interesting is that this is very much the skill of the distiller to know when to stop, not necessarily mm. based on time. It's to do with the specific gravity of the oil at that time. So everybody, each distiller will have his own opinion on exactly where one should stop. Hence, we have like all uh, Ylang Ylang ones will smell completely different uh, or, or no, sorry, slightly different because of this change in time but in this one you'll have this is the one really that is the best for aromatherapy from a clinical point of view from a therapeutic point of view because it's really high in alcohols in particular we've got the um, this is the distillation that has the most uh, linalool um, gotcha. and as we know the linalool is an easy one to understand isn't it antidepressant anti-anxiety pain killing all of those things so very well thought of so then after three to six hours and then six hours they'll be stopped again and those tend to be like a lesser aromatherapy one if you like um and like for soap making candle making all of those things where it doesn't really matter what they're like and then we have what's called a complete where uh, the uh, the mixer the perfumer i guess he, he would be blends together the different distillations so there's bits of each chemical group uh all blended together so you have like the whole the total it's called of the ylang ylang um and so it's it's interesting because people will often say to me which um oil company do you prefer who do you you know go with most and my answer to them is always well i like to go to artisan distillers because they can distill longer, so more of the sesquiterpenes come through and you have fuller bodied oils. But actually, Ylang Ylang is the exception that proves the rule. The longer it's distilled, the poorer the oil. Mm. The, um, so, yeah, so you, the, the very first ones are the best ones. So for you as an aromatherapist from that therapeutic point of view, you know, Givenchy and Chanel are wanting that extra at the start. What's an aromatherapist ideally wanting, a complete or an Ylang Ylang one? Um, well, personally, I use ones, but only because yeah. I was given one once when I was uh, in China by a, by a distiller. And it was so beautiful, far more beautiful than any of the other Ylang Ylangs that I'd use. And I always go for that one. Um, yeah. But I think probably a complete is more accessible for most people because it's slightly cheaper, I would say. Yeah. Now, any other kind of ways that you, you would use Ylang Ylang for, for the body at all? Yeah, pain. Um, so I teach, uh, pay, I am a teacher course called the Professional Pain Practitioner, and we focus quite a lot on Ylang Ylang. Um, so I always like the word algesic because I think it's like a an orphaned word. We never use the word algesia. But it's the opposite to analgesia, obviously. And algesia means like how we perceive pain. So analgesia means we perceive less pain. Um, and, and we use ylang ylang for hyperalgesia. So for people who really are off the chart and think that they're in a lot of pain. And 
well, I mean, this is like the, the a whole course in two seconds. So this, you know, it won't be <laughs> in depth, but there's lots of things that can affect one's cognition of pain, right from stress, um, from um, levels of neurotransmitters, even, believe it or not, your race can affect your um, perception of pain. And uh, Chinese perceive more pain than anyone else for some reason. It's a, a scientifically mm. proven that they do. So if somebody is really struggling to deal with pain for some reason, and of course, the most obvious would be for PMT, because it's such a great, a great hormonal balancer, then we would use uh, Ylang Ylang to wind that down. So if somebody has been suffering from like chronic pain, um, their body will be flooded with inflammatory markers as well as all of the neurotransmitters and changing the cells to make a pain pathway but it has so many different actions on inflammation throughout the body but also on nitrous oxide which is uh, sorry nitric oxide which is one of the uh, neurotransmitters that transmits aggression and pain together so if somebody is very ratty because they're in pain understandably so then ylang ylang can ease that down too um, and yeah, hormonal balance definitely would be top of the pops with for hormonal balance. That that makes so much sense, and and I can see why Lang Lang you might want to include it in anything with pain as well. Because I know when I'm when I'm in pain, whether it be a headache or a toothache or something like that, you, it, it gets your mood it, yeah. as well. And so that emotional physical balance is yeah really thrown out of kilter. Yeah, and so if somebody, I mean, I don't know if you have ever been in a chronic pain condition, 99% of us will at some point in our lives. I, I did when I was carrying decks, I had lung uh, problems with lung and pleurisy and stuff. And there's so many co comorbidities with, with pain from, you know, anxiety, depression, all of those things, it starts to overwhelm the, the mood completely. And so mm. but to have such a lovely uplifting oil, but it's also sedative at the same time, so that you're not sort of focusing on the pain all the time. It's really helpful from that point of view. Yeah, definitely. Now, another thing that Lang Lang would be amazing for, we were talking about, you know, it's greater than aphrodisiac and getting your love on and all that type of thing. But how, how do we attract a lover? Well, Lang Lang is going to help in that way as well. It's another really beautiful one for skincare and also really nice for hair care as well. So I love just adding a drop to my moisturizer. Again, whenever you hear me talking about the flower oils, the flower oils are really great for that epidermis and that top layer of skin. But running it through your hair afterwards, you know, with a, um, whether you're putting it in a leave-in conditioner or even mixing a little bit with your shampoo or conditioner, um, it's going to be really beautiful in that way as well. Yeah, gorgeous. So, uh, as you know, my mom is an aromatherapist and uh, she had a manufacturing company for 40 years and by far her biggest seller was a Rose and Ylang Ylang moisturiser. And she always talks about how it balances out the T-zone. You know, it's very good for combinations, Ylang Ylang. Um, yeah. I, when I was reading uh, The Botany, revising, because it's been so long since I read <laughs> I was like, oh, don't remember any of this. They were saying how brittle the the branches are and how it's very dangerous for the people who are picking because they have to climb high up into the tree to pick the um the branch the mm. flowers and the the branches are very brittle so they have to develop this kind of balance and i thought oh, how funny because i always say the theme of uh ylang ylang is about balance you know hormone yeah. balance emotional balance balance in, in sexuality all of those things and even the tree makes you balance when you pick it i thought that was lovely yeah wow very interesting now diving into more of a metaphysical approach for it you know we've talked about it being great for love and it's very good for romance and that type of thing i find on a deeper level it can help us not only I feel the, the phrase that comes to my mind with Ylang Ylang is it helps to awaken the lover within. Now that's not necessarily, that can be maybe if we've gone through heartbreak or past relationships where we've kind of closed down the heart a little bit in that way. But I also find it can be a really nice one for just helping us fall back in love with the romance of life. Like life sometimes can be a little bit challenging and we, we, we don't get to see the beauty of it as much anymore and i find the lang lang can be really nice in that way for just kind of going there is beauty in the world and there is magic in the world and you know 
I, I'm reminded of that maybe when I go on a holiday or I, vineyards, kind of this idea of this beauty of growing wine and li living on the earth. And, you know, that kind of romance of life that we kind of get reminded of occasionally. I feel like Lang Lang invites us back into that as well. Yeah, I would call that sensuality in life. You know, yeah. that, uh, so really feeling uh, you, there's something very language about uh, about your lang your lang, isn't it? You know, you feel you feel like a sleek cat when you're walking with it, you know, and it's almost yeah. as if like the goddess moves through you when you see the goddess everywhere around you. It's definitely yeah. a magical place, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I actually just had this flashing vision of, you know, you see different movies sometimes, even like The Wizard of Oz, where it starts in black and white and then suddenly with the lang lang the colour comes back to the world and we see that as well. So I think, you know, Elang Elang really brings that blessing in. So here's a question, though, because I've been contemplating this and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm contemplating it first. So yeah. um, I don't know if you know uh, another aromatherapist called Helen Nagel-Smith. Yes, I do. You're right. So Helen is like me. She also has synesthesia. So we're putting together a workshop about cross-sensory appreciation of essential oils so not just smelling them where do the other senses take you and mm. when i got it out so i'm very like tapped into because i already hear the, like the music um anyway that's naturally so like tapped in and i was like oh but this oil's not yellow you know when you smell it it doesn't take you to a yellow place what color place does your langy lang take you to for me it's definitely a pink color it's definitely a pink place isn't it but that's a yeah. yellow flower. So isn't that strange? So that's taken you to a completely different, like, uh, vibrational zone to what you expect. Mm, yeah. Oh, that's really uh, interesting. It, it, that's, yeah, I, I'm fascinated that we both got that. It'd be interesting in the comments if people want to share what colour they think of as well. But, yeah, definitely pink, which, of course, is a colour of the, you know, of the heart chakra. One of the interesting things about the heart chakra is that it's often represented by the colours of green and pink. Mm -hmm. And how I kind of explain that is that's because the heart chakra is about our ability to give love to the world, but also our ability to receive love from the world. And they kind of, that's like the green and the pink, are like the yin and the yang of love, that it must be a twofold thing. And I find, yeah, Ylang Ylang is very much about just in diving into that intoxicating aspect of love and the heart chakra. Yeah, and obviously we should think about the physical level of the heart chakra. We're back to that. Uh, we're back to the uh, blood pressure again, aren't we? The we are. uh, heart moving circulation around the body. Uh, I said about pain in the chest for pleurisy. You know, all of those things. All of that comes under heart chakra yeah. as well. Very much so. Um, now, astrologically, what would you associate Ilang Lang with? I think I'm going to say Venus, and I know that's really boring, but I think that's what I'm going to say. I think I'd have to agree with you on that one. <laughs> I think she, she'd feel that, you know, but, you know, I guess we're kind of going, oh, well, she, she's just the heart chakra and she's just Venus. But, you know, we know how important love is. It is interesting in this modern world, firstly, how much sometimes we forget the importance of love. Uh, love of, in all different forms. And I, I always find it fascinating that, you know, in English, it's kind of one word for love, but in many other languages, there are several words to describe different types of love mm -hmm. and how much sometimes the burdens of life, um, you know, we, we forget about love or how hard love actually is in this modern world. Um, in, you know, and we've talked about this before about with the invention of technology and different dating apps and different things like that, how much harder it can be to find love. In different forms in our life as well so i think elang elang really still maybe she's overpowering but love can be overpowering but maybe we just need to harden up a little bit and be open to a little bit of allowing our loves to be overwhelmed by love like we maybe watched in the old romantic movies in the past uh, yes i agree no such thing as the cinderella story in my opinion but um you triggered um you triggered a, a thought process that i'd kind of forgotten there which was that I have three children, so I often talk about the youngest one, but I have two much older who are, who are nearly 30. There's just like a year and a fortnight between them, and they were lovely together until Amy turned 10, and then they just became like these warring faction. And still, now, 20 years later, they're still the warring faction. But um, 
I always say that I used to put ylang ylang into the um, diffuser when they came home from school because it would bring harmony. <laughs> just, just settled down, the bickering, consistent bickering all the time. So if you've got kids who really are, nee, 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 yes, <laughs> ylang ylang, very helpful for that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So I think what we've kind of kind of come to the conclusion with with the lang lang is a little bit goes a long way aromatically. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Maybe great in a diffuser and if maybe not next to the bed if you want that, but maybe at the other end of the room and allow it to waft and entice. Just like we don't want to be too full on with love, let it entice rather than smack you in the face. Well, when you're looking at the maximum dilution for topical use, it's really low anyway. It's not 3% mm. like most are. It's 0.8%. Um, yeah. And so even that is, uh, and that's not based on like the scent. I think it's contains methyl eugenol, if, uh, if I remember rightly, is why the contraindication. So it's really, really low. But if you are going to be using it like an aphrodisiac, you know, in the bath, in the massage oil all of that rather than intoxicating the whole room i would say because it's just it, it will absorb into the system and it will go away rather than just being like becoming like uh no i'm sorry we've got to get out of bed now i just can't stand the smell <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely too much. yeah um and we haven't really talked about pregnancy is the other thing it would be contraindicated uh up to 37 weeks because of the way that it um, acts upon the womb you know that's one of the reasons why it's so good for period pains it's got this um it works as antispasmodic in lots of different ways but it will contract the womb contract the uterus mm. so it's like you've got uh, restless legs or stomach cramps or any of those things very good your langy langy is very good antispasmodic so we've been talking about the aroma of a lang lang and you know how how we go with it we don't normally talk because I'm a bit of a purist and I like to work with my oils kind of singly, but obviously blending is a, another great thing we can do with essential oils. If if people were going, what would be if on the top, off the top of your head, or you may have one in your back catalogue, what would be Liz's aphrodisiac or romance blend with a bit of a lang lang? What would you mix it with? Oh, that's a good question. Sandalwood. Yep, you, um, I think you read my mind. I was going to actually say sandalwood as well. <laughs> um, it wouldn't. It wouldn't really be my aphrodisiac oil to go to. To be honest, I'm a jasmine girl, so that's why I hesitated. But I do like ylang ylang. So um, it blends beautiful with lemon. Um, it, be, it blends beautifully with orange. Um, fantastically with rose. So all of those things have got like this beautiful sort of relaxation inhi inhibited sort of dimension to them, haven't they? Yeah, very much indeed. So any final things that I think we've kind of covered the Lang Lang and encompass it today? Any other final tips that you'd give people when working with the Lang Lang? Bound to remember something as soon as uh, uh, as we say uh, goodbye, but. <laughs> No, just I think it's a really if if you haven't got a ylang ylang, I would heartily recommend getting one. Um, it's an interesting oil to experiment with because it's quite it's interesting to blend with because it's so overpowering. Mm. And actually, so that is so that is a, a, a something I would say. It's a good exercise in being subtle. You know, um, so whether you wear it or so if we like learn to embody an oil, of course, we've got the sleek cat thing. But also it's an it's um, it's a lesson in less is more. Yes, very much for sure. And maybe some, for some, that's a lesson that they need to approach in love as well. <laughs> but not <laughs> like just in love, is it? Yeah. Not, yeah. Too overpowering. not just in love, though, is it? You know, some people are just whoa, too much for the rest of the world, you know, and, and that's great because that's them being um, authentic. But, but you know, there will be times where not everybody can take it. And so learning to kind of wind yourself back, uh, learning not to be so aggressive. And, and maybe even towards ourselves as well, that sometimes we work ourselves up into a state because we're being too aggressive in our head. And at Lang Lang again, we just say, hey, less is more, just, you know, don't 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 let those machinations in your mind get you coming to conclusions that may be a bit of a distortion of reality. Yeah, and it, and 
And there was um, a trial that was done where they measured the effects of um, ylang ylang and peppermint on cognition. And peppermint was very, very stimulating, whereas ylang ylang was quite sedative. So be aware that, you know, if you are going to wear it to work or all of those things, you're not going to be concentrating as well and all of that stuff. It's very easy to go into life thinking everything about an essential oil is helpful. No, that's not the case. Everything about an essential oil is right time, right place. Um, and, and so, yeah, if you think that you have got to go and sell to somebody and you know that you just come on to maybe you uh, the person's quite a slow burner and it's very frustrating a small amount of your lang lang in a blend will really slow you down so that you come mm. more to their way of thinking you know it's that kind of subtleties that make a difference with how you use the oils very much so and that's one of the things as, as a gemini lang lang i find to be a really good oil for gemini is for just slowing that mind down a little bit mm -hmm. definitely Okay, well, next week we're going to do something. Well, the next few weeks we've got some treats kind of in our bag. We're going to invite some guest aromatherapists um, that are visiting. I've got Vanessa Jean visiting me. And then you've got, um, oh, I've gone the blank. Lovely, the lovely Debbie Atterby is coming. Of course, to Debbie. Oh, I you, do you know you. You are for a minute. You are for a minute. Thank you, my moment. Yeah, so and, De and Debbie's De going to be visiting you. So we're going to let them choose the oils. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise what we'll talk about in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so we'll be fudging it a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hopefully they give us a bit of pre-warning and don't just tell us on the day. But <laughs> we will see you and hear you. And please don't forget to always rate, comment, share, all those different things to help get the wisdom of the plant kingdom and essential oils out to the rest of the world. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care. Thank you so much for all your likes and comments. See you soon.